Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back. It's nice to see everyone again. Um, today, I'm just going to be playing some Pokemon Unite games and giving you guys random tips and tricks here and there as I'm playing them. Now, I am currently Master Rank. I haven't actually played Master that much, so my ranking is pretty much uh, on the border of passing Ultra 5. Uh, in other words, the, the, the highest rank currently, but I haven't really pushed that hard at the moment to get higher ranks. Um, I've got two people here to help me out with the video, uh, Abinav and Removed. Um, so we'll be uh, jumping in to, to play some Unite uh, games together. And I'm going to be focusing this Unite video on basic tips and tricks. Very basic tips and tricks. Uh, why that is, is since the release of Pokemon Unite on mobile, a lot of people have come to me and ask me, well, well, I, I kind of suck at this game. Like, what? Well, how can I improve? Um, so this one's for those of you out there who basically just got the game, and uh, and you know, there's a lot of us who've who've been playing this game on the Switch for a while now, uh, for a few months now, and here are some of the things you can do to make sure you don't lose out on the on the beginner ranks, beginner great expert ranks. Pretty much all people should at least be in veteran, in in my opinion, should, should should be in veteran as long as you just follow a few basic rules. You don't really even need to be really good at the game. Uh, to, for starters, the game. So since the release of mobile, they've given us three super item upgrades to make sure that we've got a leveled playing field. So thankfully, you can go straight to the menu. Oh, let me just claim this real quick. You can go straight to the uh your item box so this is the only way to use it go to your item box uh and go to your super item upgrade once you've claimed these super item enhancers and choose three items but before you do that i have a very important tip for you guys make sure you are choosing the three main items you will be using on your main character on this account and why I say this account is because chances are you will run out of item enhancers very soon. Other than the three main, so what, so what you want to do is have a second account where you focus your item upgrades on another, in a different set of three uh, items. So in this one, my main account here, I've got Muscle Band and Body Barrier. So this is more of an attacking, more of an offensive type of play. And and my my third one that I haven't used my super item enhancer on because it's so limited is probably going to be focus band. So it's more of an offensive play with lots of HP and defense. So that's what muscle band is. Uh, make sure you've got. So these are some of the good items to be to be having at this stage of the game. Uh, some of the other ones that I haven't fully upgraded. Uh, don't do float stone, guys. Uh, not, not at this point of at this point in time. Uh, scope lens tends to be okay as well. Uh, score shield. I haven't purchased score shield on this account, but you can start another account. Start a second account where you focus three items, three other items that are um, suitable for other types of Unite characters. Uh, for example, uh, Score Shield, uh, again, Body Barrier kind of works for everyone. A score Shield uh, as well. And if you use Special Attackers, then you will want Wise Glasses, uh, alternatively to Muscle Band. Um, so I've chosen those three. So let's get started on our first match of the day all right straight into it uh one of the things you'll notice that if it's if the avatars are blanked out these are ultra lobbies so in other words they're, they're the higher ranked lobbies could be master could be ultra um some of the better characters so so at right at the start you want to actually decide whether you're going to be an offensive type of player defensive type of player or more of a support type of player uh, most characters have some use in one way or another. In fact, they're always making adjustments in this game. They're always making adjustments in this game to uh, to ensure that all the characters, all the licenses are, are uh, fair, uh, are on fairly f even playing field. But even then, some characters generally are not very well, are very much used in the master ranks. Okay, so. Let's enter our Ultra slash Master Lobby and see who we're playing with. Uh, so here are some basic tips and trips, tricks. Uh, I'll try and keep it fairly simple uh, so that everyone can understand uh, if you are new to the game. So have a look at the team lineup. 
making sure you go to battle prep. Okay, so in our team lineup, we've already got a Wigglytuff, fairly tanky, fairly good support character, and we've got two a Talonflame Greninja, fairly good um, attackers slash speedsters type of characters, and Abinav's using Machamp again, mi mid range in in all, all aspects. I'm going to go with tank because we're running up one tank, but you don't have to. Okay, you can choose anything you want. Uh, if you want to play as a team, of course that helps. I'm going to go with these three items. Always check your items, uh, making sure you've got everything, and have have a read of the move sets before you ch uh, before you go ahead. Um, and play each match and making sure that you've, you've chosen the right ones and have, have some favorite ones for me um, as a slow bro I prefer to use surf uh, surf tends to be a fairly good support type of uh, move so also you can tell who's what rank everyone is with the little blue flaps on the top right corner of my avatar uh, blue ish yellowish flap this is a master type of uh, frame and Abinav there is on is on Ultra. Have a look at the opposing team and see what type of game you're going to be up against. Uh, don't take middle if you're a tank. So I'm not going to take middle lane. I'm going to hopefully it's that Greninja that will take middle. Choose a lane. Make sure you pick one lane and stick to it. Don't go top, bottom, middle. Uh, definitely because you want to be utilizing your time to farm as much as possible, as quick as possible. Uh, Slowbro is really good at hitting several enemies. It's got an area of effect. Now at this point, you should be aiming to take down the middle character. The, sorry, the, the, the crawl on right in the middle is for anyone to grab. I kind of missed that, but I should have aimed for it right at the end there. Okay, Try not to die, of course. That goes without saying. Nice. Okay. With score shield, it really helps me score, even if I'm being attacked. Okay. Especially as a slow bro. Um, and my surf has a good stun to it. So that really also, that really helps as well. So I'm just waiting for my surf to come back and I'm going to stun that Pikachu and score. Then I go back. As a slow bro, I'll be able to take a lot of hits. Uh, if you see your center, your jungler, the jungler meaning the person who went jungle first, so that was the talent flame come in push push hard okay unless you're about to die now cross has got a lot of health he's a super tank so we get out of there we don't fight it unless we're guaranteed to win he doesn't do huge amounts of damage but he's got good stun and he's got good health so we're gonna keep scoring now scoring also gives you i just stole the, i just stole the citrus berry there so then they can't heal so it's really good to do that if you can but not everyone can do that and i don't recommend it for uh new players to be stealing be stealing um, citrus berries at this point. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. So, there we go. Oh yes, yeah, scoring is very important. Even though you only have a few points early game, if you can get those points in, it's basically, we're going to steal the Apon by the way, uh, it's basically free experience if you can just get those points in. It's really quite good. Okay, so we better get out of there. I think I'm going to die, but that's okay. That's okay. Don't try and save anyone in this game. If you try and save someone and you end up dying, it gets worse. Because you'll just be feeding the whole time. Okay, so of course, don't let them score there. All right. We managed to get that um, cross over there. Now, I one of the first most important things you should be doing is watching the time. So 7.30. We've got, we're now seven minutes and 30 seconds left of the game. At 7.45, you should be thinking about moving down to Dreadnought. So, so currently, the meta is still taking out Dreadnought. What that means is that if you take out Dreadnought, you'll get a huge XP boost. And it's about being over, being over the, the, the over level compared to your opponents. Okay, so if you can get that Dreadnought, I might die here. But that's okay, that's okay. You know, we've killed them quite a few times, so... You know, we're slightly over leveled, I think. I have to check that, but anyway. Um, now, you see how all of them are at the bottom, and yet we're missing a Greninja. We're missing a Greninja here. So basically, they're going to win that Dreadnought. So we're going to be watching that Dreadnought. Now, Dreadnought is basically dead, so there's no point of going there. We turn around and go to Rotom. It's more important to get Dreadnought because of the experience and the shield. The shield that you get from Dreadnought protects you from damage for a certain amount of HP. 
then you can use that to help tank Rotom. Rotom up here, which is more for points. More for points, not much for anything else. It's only really 20 points, but it does help you uh, score your, your main points as well, okay? But that's okay. All right, so we died there, but we at least we got Rotom. Um, Rotom is also a very good distraction, and Rotom is actually more important in the third round. Or rather, if you manage to kill Dreadnought and Rotom every single time, they'll appear about three times in the game. The third time that it appears, it is more important than Dreadnought. But the first and second time, it is more important to take uh, to take Treadnought. The reason for that is because Rotom will allow you to score goals for double the points at the end. So when when Zapdos comes at the two minute mark, so keep your eyes on the on the timer. It's very important to you know when things spawn. Um, at the t at the two minute timer, you want to have that Rotom in one of the goals if possible. So then you can jump in and score your 50 or whatever many points that you are holding on to. That's okay. All right, moving on. Getting those jungles uh, also gives you, so you see the little orange and blue lights under my feet. That is indication that I've taken the jungle spawns. Those are the Ludicolo and, and Buffalo, the Buffland. What that means is uh, I'm going to have increased attack for a short amount of time. Oh, for, for the amount of time that is, um, that it's it's on me. But also, it can slow the opponent. So if I'm a support character, slowing the opponents can be very useful as a support character. Uh, so that when I slow them, my, my friends can take them out. Okay. So once again, we've lost that Dreadnought there, but it happens, especially in Master Lobby. You can see the five of them ganging up on us here. Now, if you're losing a lot, if you're almost losing every objective, the objectives being Dreadnought and Rotom, one of the things you should consider doing instead of trying to push in and, and, and take that Dreadnought is to snipe it. What sniping means, now I'm not supposed to be taking Rotom here, but there's no one else here. I don't do enough damage as Slowbro, as a defender, to take Rotom. We should let someone else do it. Otherwise, what will happen is someone will come along and snipe that off me. So sniping means that, you know, we've done most of the damage and then someone just comes along and does that last hit. It's the last hit that matters for the, for the, uh, Dread and also for, also for Rotom. If you don't have that last hit, it won't count for you. Okay, so we're going to see if we can help that Rotom uh, push in to the goal, but we're not going to push too hard. I don't think in this situation, yeah, we won't be able to get we won't be able to get it in because there's too many of them. There's too many of them. Okay, so this you can always look at the map, always look at the map and see where they are. We can see five of them there. Rotom also gives us visibility. If you're not there with one of your um, team members, you won't be able to see what's happening unless it's around your goal around Rotom that is on your side uh, or around one of your uh, one of your other members okay so those are only times you, you can actually see something on the map okay I've probably been a bit premature with using this here I probably should have just died instead of trying to um, I'm pro uh, as opposed to trying to uh, uh, take them on so Another major tip here is to save your Unite moves, your ults, or ultimates, I like to call them ults, uh, for the objective. So including Zapdos. If you're not there with your with your, uh, your Unite move against Zapdos, you're losing the match. You're, you're pretty much going to be losing the match because we need you and everyone else, of course, to have uh, the Unite move to do the most amount of damage on the most important objective of the game, the double pointer, the not the double pointer, but the the Zapdos that will give you um, your whole team a hundred points plus to to score. If you don't score, it doesn't count. But you, you get a hundred points to score plus a shield. I should have jumped bottom there, so we see Lucario um, scoring at the bottom. I kind of let him have that one, unfortunately. So that means we'll have to take Zapdos. Now I have a lot more tips regarding to, more, a lot more advanced tips regarding to how to actually beat Zapdos. But okay, so I managed to kill the Zapdos. Luckily, I'm not the DPS type. I'm not the damage per second, the attacker type uh, as Slowbro. Yet, 
I still managed to luckily score that or, or steal that Zapdos. They may have done most of the damage, but it doesn't matter. It's the person who lands the last hit that matters on most of the spawns. Okay, so once Zapdos is active, you can score immediately. There is no wait time. So that's the main thing about having Zapdos. Is uh, you can score pretty much immediately while the timer is on. Uh, you, you've got about like a few, well, maybe like 20 seconds to get this, the points in. I haven't actually counted. Once you've got your points in, now, at this point, I still have enough. I still have enough points to keep scoring. Now, if you're on zero points, you need to go back to uh, your base. And and what you want to do is defend the goal. Defend your goal. Now, I'm going... So, normally, unless you have a score shield... So, Slowbro actually does have a score shield, but they were doing massive damage on me. If you have a score shield, you can stay in the goal and do small points. So, the ones where... the the Zapdos timer has finished, and we still want to be scoring some points. Just focus on scoring small points um, instead of scoring 50s or 40s or 30s. We're talking about like 5s and 10s or 20s. Sometimes they make a difference, especially at double points. Uh, only if you can. So anybody with a score shield should think about doing that. So we're talking about things like, look at this Crustle. He was able to score even though there were two people ganging up on him. Crustle has huge amounts of health. And that is why um, he managed to score at the end with his score shield that gives a percentage of increased health or rather as a shield um, he managed to score one more time at the end. Uh, but it didn't make a difference for us because Zapdos uh, determined the game there. We got lucky, we kind of won on a coin flip. It's what we call coin flip because it's a 50-50 at that point when, uh, when, when we're depending on Zapdos. Uh, we can see that uh, towards the Zapdos point, when we were on 252 and they were on 285, we can see a little bump up uh, in their points because Lucario scored there. So pretty much securing the win for them had we not taken Zapdos. So think about whether you actually need to take Zapdos. If you're winning by a lot and you don't want to leave it to a coin flip, you at, at, at Zapdos, you need to protect Zapdos as opposed to attacking Zapdos um, of course, if Zapdos is on a quarter health already, you'd get in there and attack Zapdos and hope that you win. But if it's on full health, don't start attacking Zapdos. Leave it alone um, and focus on getting your team together to take the opponents. Or or uh, have one or two people go out and score the remaining points that they're holding on to. Alright, so that's the end of our first video on random tips and tricks on how to play Pokemon Unite. If you have any questions, you can leave in the comments below and you can check us out on our Discord channel too and join some of our Unite players. Thanks for watching this video guys, let's aim for 7 likes on this video this time.